Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Good day. Good day and welcome. Welcome to Grow Moringa Farms. We are here. We're going to make some oil. We're going to make some uh, Moringa seed oil. Grow Moringa here. All right. Got the chat up here. Please don't hesitate to use the chat. I'm going to do some Moringa seed oil today. I got the, the Moringa seed oil machine hooked up. And we're going to get pumping some seed oil. Let me go to the shop. I'm going to share with you the link where you can get fresh seed oil. And it will be some good stuff. 100%. You don't have to question or guess if there's anything missing or added to this oil. This is pure. Good, good. I got it. All right. Sharing it there. So we're gonna make some Moringa seed oil today. Got the machine going, it's warming up. We're just kind of getting it going. That's right. This is an oil press. And this oil press here is like an auger. You can see the that's where the oil is going to come out down there and it's it's got like a like a spinning spinning screw someone in the chat says this is a masticating oil press oh good well i'm going to show you how to use the moringa seeds efficiently here thanks thanks dolo Appreciate you for coming in and checking in with us today. Hopefully you can hear everything well. Hopefully it's not too loud. I'm going to be trying to speak as well as I can in the microphone. I've also got TikTok here. Welcome TikTok and YouTube as well. We're going to be pressing Moringa seeds today. Hey, Kaz, welcome. Hey, Kaz was here. Uh, saw the saw the presentation last weekend at the farm. And uh, want to also show our YouTubers uh, this beautiful masticating Moringa seed oil machine. So I'm going to put my gloves on and we're going to start getting started. We're just going to get a few people in here uh, and I'll show you this little contraption that I built here uh, that goes on top of the oil machine. I just wanted to show you first that this is just the oil machine and then I built a contraption that goes on top of it. So we got the link there. You can always order over the phone if you need. Eight one three five six seven thirty one hundred. Oh, good. Kaz had a good time here. She's learning a lot, and uh, we are just continuing to show others how they can make some extra income from moringa and um, pressing the seeds let me show you how many seeds i have so i got a full bag of seeds here a full sack of seeds usda certified organic moringa seeds real clean edible I put my gloves on once we're ready to rock and roll. Gloves for the show. Ready to go. Good. Dolo is saying that he's learned. They've learned a lot. Thanks, Dolo, for coming in. Really appreciate you. 
I'm glad you're learning. I'm trying to get as much information out there. Um, you know, Moringa is like a $20 billion a year industry. And so my goal with my collective, my agricultural collective is to acquire and secure a hundred million dollars of that revenue. And the way to, that we're going to do that is through backyard growers, small scale growers all throughout the United States um, to pool all of our supply together. So if you have a company, Kaz is going to get a company, everybody's going to essentially get their own companies going. So that way you might have a gallon of oil or you might be able to start producing tens of thousands of seeds on your property. And so we want to be able to pool all that together because I'm getting orders uh, more than I can even keep up with myself. So, I mean, I had somebody call me the other day that wanted to get 40 tons of Moringa powder a month, 40 tons of Moringa powder a month. I was just like blown away with that. And he was like, yeah, we're trying to go to 400 tons a month uh, because they're supplying uh, their animal feed. Uh, And so. Um, let me also share the link to the, to the zoom. I've got a zoom here. And if you're interested in coming into the zoom, I'll share the link to the zoom as well. I've got the zoom meeting. Got it. We are live. Copy link. This is the zoom meeting. If you want to come into the zoom, you will be live on YouTube if you come in, and I would love to talk back and forth. If you have some questions, you want to get on screen, I uh, would love to share the screen with you. And you can ask questions live. So you can get in on the Zoom. That's the link to the Zoom. Everybody here that's on uh, TikTok, I'm also live on YouTube if you want to get in on, on the Zoom. We're going to start pressing the oil here. It's pretty much getting warmed up. I also want to show you this contraption that I built. It's an automatic hopper because what I realized is going through this process it was taking a lot of time to just press the seeds down in the machine every day. It was just taking a lot of time to just press the machine, the, the seeds down. And I'd be sitting there just hours and hours and hours with the amount of orders that I was getting in, just sitting there pressing. This thing that I built last year has helped me and saved me hundreds and hundreds of hours. So I have the plans to this machine, this, this automatic hopper inside the members area, all the dimensions and everything are inside the members area of my collective where you can get it. I even went through a video, a 3D analysis of building this actual prototype. And so you have full access to it in the members area. This is what I built. It's a two by fours, some plywood, and it's got a drill up top and you see the auger in there. It's got an auger inside the drill and that auger helps to push down the seeds. Let's go ahead and get it started. This is this is the, uh, the special contraption. It's a five gallon bucket. I cut a little bit off the bottom and also cut a little bit off the top to fit perfectly with the height of this automatic hopper uh, to get that auger just right, barely touching, touching the uh, touching the metal there. Now it's going to get quite loud, so we're going to just run this for a little while and then 
I'll show you how to make some oil and then we'll come and we'll have questions too. So please don't hesitate to put your questions in here so that way I can see them. Right on. It's just a little knocking. It's knocking in there, but when I get the seeds in there, it'll quiet down a little bit. Everybody ready? Up here. Just going to start with a little bit. There we go. We got the cake coming out. Can you see the cake starting to come out? The trick is to keep, keep this machine going for as long as you're going to press is to just keep it going. You don't ever want to kind of like stop the flow of the the cake if you do it'll burn and it'll it'll cause a jam but after it warms up a little bit i'll be able to put a little bit more seeds in it oh good Cass says that her seeds that her dog loves to eat the dried leaves that's right All right, we got some oil coming out now. Can you guys see the oil coming in down there? Might be a little bit a little bit difficult to see the oil, but I'll I'll get another bowl and switch it out so that way you can see. I can also kind of turn the machine a little bit, rotate it. I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, it's going. You guys can see it a little bit better now. See the oil? That's pretty much it. This essentially is the trick to pressing the seeds. You can see the oil starting to come out. Over time, you're going to get something like this. Moringa seed oil. And we're able to make bottles and bottles and bottles of this fresh oil now. No, uh, Dolo is asking if we have the heat on throughout this process. No, the heat is not on. There's no extra heat. You don't want to have any extra heat in this. Good question. This is considered a cold press. There's no extra added heat to the machine. I mean, there is some heat that's generated from the actual pressing itself, but. The knocking is actually really, is actually pretty good. Helps to kind of agitate it, keeps it going.
Well, I just wanted to get you an example of how you can make your own oil. Good little, little demonstration. The oil is good for the skin, the hair, the nails, cuts and bruises. And I've got, a, I've got an even bigger machine. I'll show you the bigger machine once I turn this off. This is just the little baby one. The other one pumps out twice as much. Now we've got some seed cake coming in now. Starting to get a little bit of oil down there in the bowl there. So I'm going to get a little bit more oil before we stop it. I'm trying to order a bunch of, a bunch of these machines for everybody because one of the biggest questions that I get is, uh, do you have a machine or where to get the machine? Yes, yeah, so Dolo is asking, how much do you produce in weight to get one ounce of oil? It's 20%. So forever, for every weight that you have, let's just say you have uh, four ounce, uh, five ounces, five ounces of seeds, it'll make one ounce of oil. So it's about 20%. This, the seeds are about 20% oil. Here's the cake. Good question. We do get that question quite a bit. It's about 20% seed oil, oil content out of the entire weight of the seed. And so then I'll just put this cake. I got a bin down here. And just keep it going. Sometimes it can take a couple hours to get a good amount of sea uh, oil. But this little contraption really helps to speed up the process. And I got the drill with uh, with the metal, uh, like um, oh, I forget what they call it, like a metal metal ring. You know where you can screw the ring. If you want the plans to build this, to build this automatic seed hopper, I have it inside of my, my collective. Got the full 3D model and everything for you. looking good hey tiktok everybody if you have any questions we're making moringa seed oil thanks youtube thanks everybody for coming in make sure to like this video that way that way um let us know that we're doing a good job here trying to do all the little demos if you want full length demos we've got all the full length demo demonstrations inside the members area Right. That's right. Yeah, Dolo's saying that mostly all the machines on eBay, which is where I got these machines, or, or even Amazon, they're all from China. That's right. Yeah, all of these machines pretty much are from China, which I think, given the current, current state of affairs, I think is shut down. I'm not sure. I think there's something going on. At least I got these two. These two will be running. Oh, 
The only what the reason the only reason why this is collecting in this in this bin right here is because I don't have the screw I don't have this screw down I wanted to show you the the five gallon bucket I pressurized up against this but for the show just for a few minutes this um this is collecting with some seed so I'm just kind of grabbing it normally it doesn't. I'll probably turn it off here soon and um, <laughs> we can restart it if we need to. I just wanted to get at least 20, 30 minutes of the show and then we'll do Q and A. Also just wanted to get a good amount of oil pressing, pressing out here for you so you can see. Uh, Heidi's asking a good question. Do you mix the oil with other oils for fragrance? Yes, absolutely. But what I do is I just sell it as Moringa seed oil as a base. So that way, anybody who wants to do whatever they want with it, they can do whatever they want. But I just have the oil by itself. The pure oil. And then you can add any kind of fragrance. Actually, if you add like tea tree, lavender, and other other oils, it makes a really good bug spray. Actually, I I add rose oil to it to make a bug spray. It's really good for that. So we'll just do a few more minutes of this. I just want everybody to see essentially how this works. Thanks, Heidi. Um, Heidi is asking what we do with the cake. So the cake we sell it. Sell it in packages like this. And these go for just a few bucks on the website and you can put it in, in your pots. It's actually a nutritional additive to other plants. It's got 60% pure crude protein. It's like 60% protein, it's vitamins, it's minerals. And it's also very good to add it to animal feed, especially for animals like, um, chickens and goats and cows and pigs. It's really good to just kind of add a little bit of minerals and fiber to the diet every once in a while. Uh, you could like mix this in with like a bowl of slop or even just kind of put it out on the ground and the chickens will pick at it. And the cake is also good as a soil additive to pots. Yep, this is the cake here. It's just the crushed up seeds. It's just the crushed up seeds. I hear you knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> yeah, she's really knocking. That's all right, though. This drill has been through it. This drill has been through it. Yeah, nothing, nothing goes to waste here. That's for sure. We're using every little thing. I'll show you something else that I actually um, I make from the, from the seeds after I turn this off. Hang out a little bit. I'll show you what I'm making with the actual seeds um, because there's, there's paper. There's paper on this. I just wanted to get you a good good 20 minutes or so, just making some of the oil. I think we got a good, a good amount of oil now in there. So I'll show you what I do from here. That's pretty good. I think everybody gets the point. It's pretty loud. Plus now we can always watch this again. So I'll just let that run through and then we'll turn that off. Go. 
really, really good as an animal feed and really good as a soil amendment, this, this cake. And nothing goes to waste here. So I'm just going to let it run all the way through until it, it until it's it's pretty much coming out. So a little bit of oil still coming out of the into the bowl here, and I'll show you what the oil looks like once it first comes out of the machine. All right, now she's pretty much stopped. It's good. We'll go ahead and just turn her off. There's a reverse on it too. So I, I hit the reverse. And you can see a little bit of the oil still coming out in the reverse. There we go. That's pretty much it. Just to make sure there's nothing in the in the little auger. All right, let's let's check out the oil so that way we can see. Look at that. Fresh oil, just about 10, 15 minutes worth of pressing. Already got maybe $50 worth of oil. I'm selling this little, this little vial for like 10 bucks on sale for five sometimes. I think right now, even on the website, I dropped it down to five bucks right now. But from here, what you would want to do is... is sift it you'd put this through a little sifter and then you would let it settle and after letting it settle it'll clear up show you an example So this is after it's settled. You can see the settle here. It's got a lot of particulates at the bottom. But then what you would do is you would pull this oil off the top. You would just pull this oil off the top. Uh, maybe like a turkey baster. Just suck that up off the top. And... There's, there's different levels to the settle where the bottom layer you can use for like a, like a body scrub and then the upper layer you can use for like a face scrub. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more uh, soft and gentle for the face. And then after it's settled, then, then you get something then you get something like this after about two weeks. Uh, Dolo is saying, depending on the use, you can you can put coconut oil. That's right. You can add you can add other oils to this. Now, this oil by itself is a monosaturated oil that's really good for the heart. And Oh, oh, Dolo has already been making oil and is saying that if you use a taller glass column, it's a lot easier to pull the oil once it settles a taller glass column because then it's like compressed into a, a shorter volume. Absolutely. I kind of like it like this. I find that it actually gets clearer a lot faster if it has a lot more room to settle uh, because if it's if it's smaller and taller it takes longer for the particles to go from that top top all the way down to the bottle to to where it gets clear i noticed that actually i've tried that in a very thinner taller one but the reason why i like it in this round wide one is because this oil ends up getting clear a lot faster because it's it's less it's less tall for it to settle and it gets clearer a lot faster, actually, saving the time. Yeah, so faster settling, exactly. Where are you, Dolo? Where are you located? Are you in here in the U.S.? Are you somewhere uh, outside of the country? Uh, Haiti is saying, can you use cheesecloth 
to sift. So you yeah, you could. That'd be that'd be really messy with the oil. I like to just to settle. I like the settling. The settling, it's it's clean. You set it aside. Oh, Dolo's in Hawaii. Awesome. Yeah, we have some members in Hawaii. Um, actually, one of our members, he's got uh, a large property, and he's starting to produce lots of powder. And he's an old school farmer, and he's got lots of land. And he's like, I'm on the best land in the whole world. Dark, volcanic soil. Uh, and he's got lots of big moringa trees, actually, that he's that he's um, growing. So Haiti is saying, can you use a cheese cheesecloth to settle? And while you can, I really like to just um, first first off, I like to just use a sift, where I'll pour I'll pour this through a sifter, like a, a sift, like a very fine fine mesh and that really grabs any of the big particles then i'll set that aside then what i'm what's left is really like fine cloudy particles inside this and then that'll settle so the first sift that i pull off that ends up becoming more of like the body scrub and i can sell that as a body scrub then the second settle once you have this sifted and you have a real clear, um, like a clear, just cloudy cloudiness, once the cloudiness settles, that'll turn into body butter. I need to get a lid for this. Ask some more questions. Here we go. So here's kind of like an example of the sifter, right? We got the cake, lots of products that we're able to come out with. And um, and the oil, so you can get it into different sizes. I offer the different sizes as well. It's really important for you when you go to the farmer's market to have a bunch of different sizes. There's a lot, there's a huge potential for Moringa in Hawaii right now. It's uh, it's primarily a vegetable market, absolutely for the greens, fresh greens and, um, and being shipped to the continental and Europe. Cause you're, you're right there where you can even go to Asia, Europe, uh, continental, uh, U.S., and um, there's lots of secondary products that are produced. So that's that that brings us into uh, the paper. So one of one of the processes that I like to do is is actually I like to sift the seeds in a sifter, right? And that's that sifting process, uh, it separates the seed from the paper. So I get lots and lots and lots of Moringa paper. It's like a pillow, very soft. And uh, I, I make sure that it's really sealed up so that way no bugs or anything can get in here. And this is literally like a pillow of just Moringa paper. This is from the seeds. Right? That paper... Then what I did was I made a decal. This is a ancient Japanese decal 
essentially that I made by hand where I've got a wooden frame with a screen and another wooden frame here with a screen on it, right? You can see the screen on here. <laughs> Moringa pillows, right? But I'm actually really interested in getting this, this paper going where we've got this, this screen, this, this decal here. So I've got the frame. Then I put the screen on here. And then I've got this. And then what I'll do is I'll put the paper in the blender and I'll make a pulp. I'll add water and I add agar, which is kind of like a potato sugar. So I'll add agar to it. And I'll put that in a bin and it'll make a pulp. And then I just uh, swoosh this through the the pulp water and and then shake it up a little bit and what's left is a film of that paper i'm making sure that i really blend it really well so i'm blending really really well so that way it's really fine and then what comes out after it's dry is actually paper. I've actually made Moringa paper from the Moringa seed wings. <laughs> Even more things that do not go to waste that you can just make. And someone asked me, they were like, what do you want to use it for? Well, I'm actually an artist and I love to paint. And I was thinking that the Moringa man could paint a Moringa tree on Moringa paper and it could be framed, framed out really nicely and preserved. The sugar really helps to keep it together. It's like a binder. And this is just an example of some, some, some products that can be manufactured from having the Moringa trees byproducts, nothing goes to waste. I mean, we've already had the cake. Now we've got the paper. And one of the things that I like to do is actually with the seeds, I like to just put the seeds in the blender and even make capsules out of the seeds, which I have on the website now as well. So beautiful. Hopefully everybody's having a good Sunday. This has been a fun little little demonstration. I'm happy to answer any more questions. I'll be here for a little while longer and um, would love to, to see more people making products. You know, the oil is a good lubricant. I love using it for my face. I love using it for my hair. Uh, I love putting it on my skin. I love using it in the bug spray. It's really good in the bug spray. And yeah, it can be added to a bunch of other products too. And the reason why I got so clear is because of the settling process. Now there is a decanter, like an oil decanter that you can use that'll help speed up the process. Um, but I don't have that. I just have time. And so I just let it settle for like a week. Then I'll pull it off. I'll let that settle for another week and I'll separate out all of the settle every week. So that way it ends up coming out super clear and really nice. And so when you're at the farmer's market, what you want to do is you want to say, Hey, you know, would you like to try this moringa oil? And say, just put a little bit on your on your on your finger right here, and then just put a little bit on your skin, and then smell it. Okay, okay, and then rub it in, and then and then usually when they rub it in, they're like, "Wow, that feels really nice." You know, that feels really really good, and it 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 goes into the skin really fast. It's fast absorbing into the skin. So it doesn't sit on the skin like coconut oil or other oils. 
it goes right into the skin. So you know that it's in the bloodstream super fast. Oh, yes. Yes. Dolo's asking a really, really good question. Could you go over when's the best time to harvest the seed pods? Absolutely. So there's there's three phases of the seed pods, right? You've got the small little stringy greens, green ones. Then you've got like the, the medium ones that are the most popular for eating. Right. They've got a little bit of a of a of a of a light colored seed inside. Like if you were to open it up, it would just be a white seed. That's phase two. It's like a medium size or getting a little bit bigger. You can see the seed forming inside. And then the the mature, mature seed pods, it's kind of like overripe. They're browning out. They've got stripes on them. And they're really plump and thick. At that point, those ones are really just going to be for for uh, making trees, uh, eating the seeds, you know, and then you're you're going to be drying those drumsticks. The middle phase, where they're they're kind of in between, they're not quite stringy, but they have a little bit of a plump to them. They're starting to get a little bit of the, you know, the bulbous. You can see the seeds forming on the inside. That's where you're going to chop it, and you're going to use that for soup. And then the small little stringy ones, the first phase where they're really long and stringy, where they don't have any seeds inside, you're going to use that for like pestos. You're going to blend that up completely. You're going to chop that up and cook that even just in, in soups and, and uh, making sauces with that. Now, the question that Dolo is asking is actually, when's the best time to harvest? I guess it would say the use so if you're using it for the pestos, you want to harvest it before the seeds form. If you're using it for soups uh, and you want to grab it before they're mature and before they're, they even form a skin, because the seed, when it forms a skin on it, a shell, it's not quite as desirable for eating. So you want to harvest those ones. If you're using it for cooking, you want to, you want to harvest those ones before they form a shell on the seed. So you get them when they're in that in-between stage, right when they're really kind of, you can see the seeds really starting to form, just starting to form. And then the last stage, if you're using it for trees, if you want to, if you want those seeds to be used for growing new trees, or if you want them to be dark and mature, you know, dark, dark colored seeds, you know, like this, if you want to have really dark, dark colored seeds, mature seeds that you can sell, then you want to wait until those drumsticks are fully browned out. And um, you don't want to have a tree that has old seed pods on it with new seed pods on it because old seed pods could potentially have bugs. And those bugs and pests, they're going to travel over to the younger pods and to the younger seed pods. And so... Every year or every other year, you want to make sure that you're bringing your trees all the way back short. You're removing all, you're removing all of the material, right? So that way, when, when your trees start to have drumsticks, they start to have drumsticks all at the same time. Because what's going to happen is uh, you're going to have a big tree and it's going to have little stringy ones and it's going to have some medium sized ones. It's going to have some old ones. And if it has old ones on it from last year, those ones are already rotting. You know, those ones are already bad. You can't really use those. Those have fungus and mold and bacterias and bugs manifesting and burrowing inside of the drumstick. So, so you want to have a schedule to be very specific on the harvesting, it's about having a schedule. If, you, if you're if you going to harvest the tree, you want to bring it all the way back to where you get all the drumsticks off. And then you may go a whole year without harvesting that tree again, just letting it grow out and do its thing. But here's the thing. You're only doing that after, say, like the third year when you've already cut the tree back maybe 50 times. So you've already, so the tree is coming up. It's got one stem on it, one stem. You cut that back within a couple months. Then it grows up again. It's got two stems and you cut that back after a couple months. Then after a couple more months, you cut that back. It's got a couple more stems. Then after a couple more months, you cut that back again. Now it's got, after the second year, 
now you've got a nice big bushy tree that you've already harvested the greens in the first two years. You've already been harvesting the greens for like two years, right? Then when you're like, hey, you know what? She's mature. She's ready. She's ready to go for just drumsticks. Then you let her go and you don't touch her for like a year. And you let her do its thing after she's already got a huge base with a bunch of drumsticks, with a bunch of branches. So that way she can hold the weight of all those drumsticks. Right? Make sure you guys can hear me if, if this is even on the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Just want to make sure you guys can hear me good. That's why I got the mic here. So th that is really specific to your question is that um, the earliest to harvest your tree is within 30 days. You want to harvest your tree within 30 days of it sprouting. Cut it back. Then every 30 days for like a year, you're cutting it back. You're cutting it back. You're cutting it back. Right? And then after the second year, now you've got a big tree that now has got a bunch of branches on it that you can let it go and let it let the flowers form. It's going to have hundreds of stems on it. It's going to have thousands of drumsticks on it. But if you just are growing a tree and you're not cutting it back, you're going to end up just having a very minimal first harvest. You're not going to have very much drumsticks. The trees are going to be very minimal. If you want to get a really big, heavy set of drumsticks, you got to keep cutting that tree back in the first two years very, very consistently. And then you're saying to yourself, okay, now she's ready for drumstick. You start to see a lot of flowers forming on it. Then you say, you know what? I'm going to let her go for a whole year. I'm not going to touch her for a whole year. And then boom, those drumsticks all set at the same time. Now, if you just leave drumsticks on that tree and you're just picking at it, picking at it, and you grab some here, some there, the ones that are up there that you can't reach, they're going to rot and they're going to bring in bugs and pests and they're going to get moldy and fungusy. And um, then when your new drumsticks are forming on the same tree, so now you've got new drumsticks coming out with the old ones still up there, this is not a very good commercial way of growing, a commercial setting it's much more consistency, keeping them very well regulated and making sure that you have all of your drumsticks coming out at the same time. So that way everything is cleaner. And then you're going to be rotating your trees every eight years or so. So the first two years, you're really just getting greens. Then, you know, by the third year, she's going to have her first set. It might not be that much maybe a couple hundred drumsticks, and they might not even all come out really dark and mature. But then by the third year to the eighth year, you know, you've know you got five years, six years in there where she's really pumping out a commercial level of thousands and thousands of drumsticks. Great questions. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Dolo, from Hawaii. Yeah. I'll be here for a few more minutes. Um, if you have any more questions, some really good questions about making the making the um, making the seed oil. I'm really glad I had a chance to hop on here and do a little demonstration. Haven't done a little oil demonstration in a while. The oil is actually coming from this 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 little shell from the inside here. From inside here, this is where the oil is actually coming from is inside the shell. Now you can eat the shell. But this little inside piece is really soft. This is where the oil is actually coming from. This little this little little ball right here. Boom, I call that the pineal gland. <laughs> Boom. Right? So now when you press it, should be a little bit of oil that comes out. This is a little bit hard. If you press it, oh yeah, here we go. Should have some oil. Oh, yeah. There's definitely some oil coming out here. Dolo was asking how much oil is is on is in the seed. There, see some of the oil there on my finger? See how it's uh, a little wet? The oil is in there. Oh. 
and it's about 20% of the weight. The Moringa olefera is olefera, olefera is oil producing. So this is an oil producing tree. Not only are there oils like in the leaves, but one of the most valuable, valuable parts of this tree is that it has lots and lots of oils in the seed. And you can eat the seed too. Now, it's going to be bitter at first. <laughs> it's going to be really bitter at first. But just like the Bible says, it's the, the bitter seed that turns sweet with water. Mm. And then it gets a little bit sweeter. It's like a little sweet little treat. Someone told me that they like to drink the Moringa tea without any uh, like uh, honey or sugar or, or maple syrup like I like to use a little bit. They said that they drink the Moringa tea bitter. And then they'll eat the seed and then drink the tea. And the tea ends up being sweet. I love that. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try making a raw Moringa tea. No sweetener. Then I'll eat a seed. And then I'll just sip the tea and see if that comes out sweet. Because I don't know what it does, but now the water is like super sweet. It's rough at first, but it's really cool how it does that. Now, what you can also do is grind up a bunch of the seeds and put them in dirty water. There's an example. I think one of the, our friends here um, ground up some seed, put it in dirty water, and over a course of 24 hours, 36 hours, that dirty water turns clear. You end up getting clear water. What is very special about this seed is that it is a flocculent and that it helps to clean water. What do you think it's doing in your body? Your body is mostly made up of water. So it's also doing the same thing inside of your body as well. It's cleansing the waters. It's pulling all of that junk out into the bottom of your body, and it's helping you to pass it. And there's lots of proteins here. And, and you can even eat it with the shell. And of course, they're very, very high germination. I think what I'm going to do later on in the week, possibly even by next week, is I'm going to start planting seeds on camera because now that the, the weather's changing a little bit, it's going to cool down a little bit. I can actually work a little bit more in my greenhouse. It's been so hot. Uh, but now with the cooling, I can start planting some of the seeds and get a really good head start and fill my entire greenhouse up and... Um, and just ship ship moringa trees all throughout the winter, at least until we get a frost. But at least right now, I'll get all as many trees as I can germinated, and um, and we'll we'll probably just start doing doing planting of the seeds for the next several weeks. Right on. Well, did everybody have a good time? Hope every had everybody had a great time here, just learning, getting some good info. Had a nice little demonstration, pressing some seed oil. I really appreciate everybody for coming in today, checking us out. We'll have this video posted live so you can go back to it and um, share it with a friend. We're doing lots of really great things with our social media nowadays. We're posting lots of really great educational quotes, testimonials, and things that are happening inside of the members area. Uh, and I'm meeting with the members every day, Monday through Thursday. Uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And um, it's it's a great gathering space for anybody that is interested in just trying to make a little bit of extra income. You know, I want to get you to three, four, five figures a month, get to six figures a year, seven figures. I've been able to make seven figures over the course of my career growing Moringa. You know, uh, consistently doing over six figures a year. 
you know, and that's just doing Moringa full time, having a website, having social media, um, doing content, you know, affiliate marketing, you know, and doing all the things that you need to do to have have a business. And that's what we're here to do is train you on how to do all the things. If you really love Moringa, you want to get into Moringa, do all the things, you know, do powder, do capsules, do tea, do oil. I make spice. I'm making paper. You know, I'm I'm selling the sticks. I'm selling the trees. I'm sprouting the seeds, making trees, um, all the things, right? So just doing all those little things. And that really helps to have really good, consistent income for coming in. Thank you. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you very much for the for the uh, for the likes. And thanks, Dolo, for coming in. I really appreciate you as well and asking some really great questions today, keeping me company on this wonderful Sunday. I'm going to go ahead and make some more content. I'm going to go outside. Uh, I've got some some cuttings that I need to put into my hedge and um, I'll be making some some extra some more content today. You'll see some more videos coming in on YouTube. And I really appreciate you all for coming in and joining us. So we'll go ahead and uh, end it here. Take care, TikTok. I'll see you soon. Peace and love. And thank you, YouTube, as well. I appreciate it, everybody. You guys, have a great rest of your day. Happy Sunday, self-care Sunday. Peace and love.